Haggai's North Korea has gathered its most important army and government officials for a meeting and made growing tensions between the rogue state and the United States. Despot North Korea leader Kim Jong-un was seen in brand new video footage, as you can see down here on the bottom right, um, addressing those behind the string of intercontinental ballistic missiles and other close confidants. North Korea sparked fears of World War III after ending a two-month lull in Kim Jong-un's ICBM testing to launch yet another test missile. The missile travelled higher than any, te any tested previously by North Korea, prompting US President Donald Trump to bolster his military presence on Kim Jong-un's doorstep, as you can see in the video. The latest video shows North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un appearing with a team of nuclear scientists before communist leaders. The appearance before the huge crowd of government officials after North Korea boasted of its most recent missile success. New satellite images suggest North Korea is expanding its nuclear test site. The images show a high level of activity at the Pyongyang Ri, <coughs> excuse me, test site in northwest North Korea, which means Kim Jong Un could be building another tunnel for missile tests. The satellite image shows a routine presence of vehicles and personnel and signs of evacuation. That's supposed to be excavation according to U.S. Ac academics. The 38 North blog, run by the U.S. Korea Institute at John Hopkins University in Washington, D.C., said this includes a routine presence of vehicles and personnel around the portal movement of mining carts from the portal to the adjacent spoil pile and signs of fresh spoil being dumped onto the pile. The U.S., alongside allies Japan and South Korea, held joint exercises to prepare for future missile launches by Kim Jong-un. The allies are responding to the growing tensions in the region as North Korea continue, continues its fast developing weapons programs. The fresh exercise sharing information excuse me, will be a six drill sharing information in tracking ballistic missiles among the three allies on Kim Jong-un's doorstep according to Japanese officials. It was not established whether the US terminal high altitude defense Area Defense System would be involved in the preparations for further North Korea missile launches. The third system sparked outrage from China after the high-tech defense system was installed in South Korea. Beijing fears the system's powerful radar could look deep into China and threaten its own security. Now, this follows Kim Jong-un visiting the Mount Pektu, um, where his father and his grandfather used to visit before. Um, making important decisions regarding the state. <coughs> so, it goes goes to this mountain, which has, you know, spiritual significance for him and his family, and they usually go there before making important decisions regarding North Korea. Then we have the news that the top scientists, the ones involved in the ICBM launch, are meeting with the communist leaders there. And... It's all in an effort to get to the next provocation, which is possibly the dreaded Jushi bird. And he could launch it, apparently, according to this report, this week to mark his dad's death, which was on the 17th of December. The communist state dramatically ended two months of silence last month by testing an intercontinental ballistic missile thought to be capable of reaching the U.S., Hailing the success launch of Hosung 15 ICBM, North Korea leader Kim Jong-un boasted about the completion of the nuclear state force. On September the 3rd, 2017, they tested a hydrogen bomb, and since then, North Korea and the US have been locked in a high-stakes game of nuclear brinkmanship, which both, with both sides threatening all-out war. Concerned about threat of North Korea missile and nuclear programs, the US has held highly provocative military drills involving warships and aircraft throughout 2017, as we know. <coughs> Excuse me. Despite military posturing, U.S. Army drills and threats from U.S. President Donald Trump to totally destroy North Korea, they it appears to be ineffective. So Kim Jong Un, who has ruled North Korea since 2011, is widely considered to be untouchable, um, having recently punished his top arm, army chiefs to quash fears of an uprising. And in the run up to Christmas, experts believe Kim will express his dominance again by engaging in significant weapons of mass destruction activities. The 33-year-old autocrat has a habit of testing missiles and nuclear weapons on dates significant to his family's three-generation dynasty. The rogue state has fired 23 missiles during 15 tests since February, three of which were ICBMs and one nuclear test, its sixth and largest in 2017. 
The data shows that North Korea has conducted two missiles or nuclear tests on average in December since 1984. And North Korea has, um, has formed for provocations on major anniversaries, but its last date of note, which was the founding of North Korea, or rather the, the party itself, was on, on October the 10th. Um, but that passed without any incident. Um, but in the coming weeks, analysis from the Center for Strategic and International Studies indicates a new missile or nuclear test is highly likely on an important date. Um, and considering he's been to the mountain where his father used to go, and they say that he was uh, that the he was born there, I don't believe that, but there you go. Considering that visit to the mountain, spiritual significance for them, and then you've got the whole meeting with the Communist Party and the and the um, top scientists there, it kind of does suggest that something is coming, along with, obviously, the, the activity that's been going on around their submarines and the activity that's been going on around their nuclear test site. So something is coming. When it's coming, we don't actually know, but considering Kim Jong-un's dad died on the 17th of December, it may be, it may be likely that he will do something on the 17th of September, uh, December to mark that particular date. Moving on to a completely different story, but one that concerns me is a story about undersea fiber optic cables, which carry our internet. I'm not going to read the whole report because it's rather long, but the gist of it is a hundred, hundreds of thousands of miles of fiber optic cable lay on the ocean floors, a crucial part of the global internet's backbone and only rarely do ship anchors or undersea landslides or saboteurs disturb them. Um, still, a few voices now call for stronger global mechanisms and even military action to protect the cables against future malicious, malicious activity by state saboteurs or extremists. The infrastructure that underpins the internet, these undersea cables are clearly vulnerable um, and more vigorous action to protect the submarine networks is, is needed. They underpin pretty much everything we do. So... I just wanted to point out because obviously in this day and age where they're trying to cramp down on the amount of information that we have access to, something like cutting undersea cables in a time of crisis would mean that we wouldn't be able to communicate with each other in the same way that we do. Um, satellites only carry a very small amount of the data that we are used to seeing and most of it comes through fiber optic undersea cables. Um, and if those are cut, the technology is available to a lot more people now, such as, you know, unmanned vehicles that are able to go down to the depths of the ocean um, and perform the rather easy operation of, you know, cutting a cable. Then we're, we're pretty much in the dark and, and back to, <coughs> excuse me, back to a stage where information can't be shared. So I wanted to put that out there. So anyone who has information to share, I suggest they share it while you're while you're able. Don't hold on to it. Share it. the The whole situation with the um, terrorist in New York. I feel, I feel like it's all, it's all just coming together at this time. It's almost like a, a preemptive warning to, to people in in New York. You had the terrorist attack with the pressure cooker bomb. Pressure cooker bomb. Um, the terrorist attack with the, the man driving the van, the terrorist attack that happened just um, on the 11th of December with the pipe bomb um, underground. It feels like some kind of warning in that sense. May agree, may not agree, but, you know, I feel like it's just really screaming out to us. You know, maybe something um, possibly in New York coming uh, coming shortly. Um, alongside that, obviously, I already did a video on this, and there's plenty of videos out there with Wendy Williams as well. Recently, you know, collapsing and that whole. Yeah, so that whole subliminal message in there, you know, New York going down, and then after she falls on the floor, they cut the lights and it all goes dark. So. You know, I felt like there was plenty of subliminal messaging there and it all just seems to be associated with um, America as a whole, but New York in particular. I feel like there'll be other, other states that are in danger, like Florida, California, Texas, 
and obviously New York. So those four places, whether anything occurs in those places, God, I hope not. But the warning is, the subliminal messaging is strong out there. And um, if we're to pay attention to it, like we didn't pay attention to the subliminal messaging about 9-11, I don't think any of us want to make that mistake again. The stakes are too high. The lives that could be lost would be in the thousands, possibly the hundreds of thousands, and even up into the millions. So I, I, I just want people to understand that fact and make sure that you're not blindly just watching things for entertainment, but also paying attention to the potential subliminal messaging that could be implanted in those videos or implanted in those pictures and you know wake up we're not living in a world candy canes and roses you know the devil is out there and he's working hard to bring down as many people as many of god's people as he can and um you know people are falling away from 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 god we need to stay strong the last thing i want to say is happy hanukkah to uh, any Jewish people that may be listening. And I also just want to point out the significance of the of Hanukkah occurring um, this year on December the 12th. So that started yesterday. It's December the 13th over here in the UK at the moment, uh, just uh, five minutes to one in the morning. And it, obviously it's an eight-day festival, eight-day festival of lights. So, <coughs> excuse me, it ends um, at sundown on the 20th, of December, um, which uh, another YouTuber, JK Bugger, has spoken about the 20th of December there. So when I, you know, realized that it was Hanukkah, Hanukkah today and it's an eight-day festival, uh, I thought I'm, I might as well just mention it. It's also significant because it doesn't always occur on that day. Um, it occurs on different dates. For example, 2013, it was 27th of November, 2014, 16th of December, and so on and so forth. Um, this is the first Hanukkah after they have been, after their 70th year, for one, and after Donald Trump has declared um, Jerusalem Israel's capital. So I feel like this particular Hanukkah um, has some some strong significance. Again, God knows what's going to happen, and really only God knows what's going to happen, but, you know, we're we're trying to get the warnings out there in case anything does happen, you know, we didn't stay silent, we we tried, um, and that's it, so uh, I hope the video was informative for you guys, um, I encourage you guys to look for stuff yourself as well at the same time, you know, I don't mind, I don't mind doing these videos, but I don't always have time to sift through all the news to pick out what's important from what's not important and to share it with you guys, so, you know, if you don't see a video from me in a couple of days, you know, just, <laughs> just do it yourself, that's, that's it, um, you know, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, and as always, just, just keep praying, keep, your, keep, um, keep God in your, at the front of your mind, um, and the last thing I just want to say is, Obviously, I've already mentioned the fact about Hanukkah and the potential um, provocation that may come from North Korea as well. But the next two weeks are, are very crucial and we really need to remain alert. We already knew um, about the submarines that they're talking about from North Korea, but now they're floating the idea that the North Korean submarines could be a problem. So it seems like they're you know, preparing for that possibility. Um, they've done evacuation drills, they've done blackout drills, there's been various military exercises. China has stopped its flights and closed trade bridges. Uh, they practice drills with Russia, um, set up refugee camps along the border with North Korea. Hawaii's prepared with their air raid sirens. Japan's done evacuation drills. Russia's got a thousand military personnel along North Korea's border. Um, <laughs> and it just seems that the the more we hear, the, the possibility the stronger the possibility becomes that we just get numb to it, you know. Um, we've been hearing these things for, you know, a good couple months now, and it could get to a point where you're just like, oh, it's just old news, but that's the danger. We can't become numb to it. We need to remain alert. Um, and that's just the last thing I wanted to add, it, add on to the video. So, you know, have a good morning, afternoon, and night once again.